Hi folks, thanks for coming to this talk uh, about learnings from the Games User Research Salary Survey uh, about the pandemic. Uh, my name is Sebastian Long. I'm the Managing Director of Player Research, a consultancy based in the UK. Uh, and I'm here on behalf of the Games User Research Salary Survey team of Jonathan Dankoff and Andrew Menga Ogle, uh, who provide this uh, salary survey, annual salary survey, for the Games UR community every year. In the last couple of years, we've captured a little extra data on the effect of the pandemic on games user research uh, as a discipline through the anonymous responses in our salary survey. It is clear from that salary survey data that there has been tremendous upheaval in games user research but I sense a lack of conversation uh, about this major change to our discipline occurring in the conferences that there have been and in the discussion groups and, and the places where we communicate together. I submitted this talk and have put this talk together in order to write that, to try and reflect on this time period and the uh, what we've learned from the salary survey. Uh, as an indicator of the upheaval, um, to reflect on the time period and the effect that it's had on games user research as a discipline, uh, and also to recognise the potentially lasting impact that this pandemic will have on our games user research discipline as a result of our immediate response to it. I feel it's important to say aloud that we are all, as games user researchers, solving similar issues and that the discipline has somewhat changed temporarily or permanently. And to ensure that the public picture of games user research, what we do, how we do it, what it means to have a career in this space, uh, can tell a story of the pandemic reality of both yesterday and today as we speak uh, to prepare for a post pandemic future. So I've been reading through the responses, the anonymous responses to this salary survey, particularly responses to one question. The, we asked, how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted research operations at your company? We asked that twice in the 2020 and 2021 um, survey, which got 166 responses to this question. And again, in the December 2021, January 2022 survey, which garnered 194 responses to the same question. What I want to do in this talk is examine the topics that the salary survey respondents self-reported. I'll present some of those themes and some of the changes that the, sal that the salary survey detected. I won't be sharing any verbatim responses from that. That's that's not how we respond. Uh, how we present the salary survey data nor will I be surfacing any individual companies or groups, not that those are volunteered in the salary survey anyway. Um, my objective is to kind of go is to go breadth first and just talk about some of the themes and some of the trends that have come out in order to sort of paint a picture of things that we can detect have been happening in this time. So thank yous uh, to the salary survey team of Jonathan and Andrew, of course, to the salary survey respondents who uh, volunteered these responses um, and diligently answered the questions uh, and indeed to a small handful of games user research managers who answered some additional questions I had um, about their respective studios COVID responses so I could get a bit of a better picture globally about how studios have responded um, uh, and, and roll that into my understanding of some of the um, some of the responses okay let's just briefly look at when the salary survey took place uh, so what I've done here is as a graph, uh, I've overlaid the salary survey responses in, in, in the bar graph with the changing caseload, global caseload of the pandemic uh, from the start of the pandemic in, in late 2019 uh, to the present day at time of recording. You can see that in the 2019-2020 salary survey, that the pandemic was only just beginning. I don't think it had been declared a pandemic at that point. In fact, the last person to complete the 2019 survey was on February the 7th. And there is no mention of any COVID related topic in the entire salary survey 
in 2019-2020. So all of our findings in this uh, talk come from the latter two surveys, the 2020-21 and the 21-22 uh, survey. There is another talk at this event which will cover non-COVID findings from that second survey as we present the salary survey data and the, you know, the job appreciation and you know, all the other wonderful data uh, that the salary survey collects. So there's another talk at this conference on that. Okay, let's dig into some of these findings. Our first and one of the most apparent uh, topics in, across both of the surveys is, of course, closures. Naturally, this is a particularly strong theme in 2020. And there are 50 or more mentions of offices and laboratories expressly being completely closed, uh, either, either in that time when the survey was completed or beforehand. Uh, it was The salary was taken, as a reminder, in December uh, 2020 and early 2021. So some months after the uh, pandemic had begun. A handful of respondents mentioned labs being uh, open for playtesting with internal staff only. This is a topic I'll come back to a little bit later uh, in this presentation. But for 2020, late 2020, the clear theme is closure of labs. Fast forwarding one year into the second salary survey and the number of responses that expressly said labs remain closed was way down uh, to around 20 individual respondents, down from uh, 40, nearly 50 the previous year. And furthermore, there are 20 mentions of expressly labs being open again, uh, starting in that sort of December 2021 period. So whilst these aren't good measures at all of the number of labs that are open or even the proportion of labs that are accepting uh, in-person testing again, they are a clear indicator of a change in process and policy between the December 2020 and December 2021 uh, that the two salary surveys have captured. Naturally, 2021's responses also began to include mentions of new protocols for in-person testing as labs came back open again, integrated new protocols. Protocols that were mentioned include the checking of vaccine status of participants, a reduction in the capacity, concurrent capacity of testing laboratories, the use of social distancing, the mandating wearing of a mask, uh, the increase of time in between sessions when there are, let's say, multiple slots or multi multiple um, sessions in one day involving different members of the public, and in having sections of a research process that were previously face to face remain remote or socially distanced um, even though the tests are remaining in lab for example the brief or the post session interviews being hand, uh, being conducted uh, remotely inside the premises so you know clearly a massive shift in between the immediate reaction in 2020 and the phased reopening or partial reopening in some labs in 2021 and we'll continue to capture information about this uh, reopening of labs and um, effect of the pandemic on research operations in future salary surveys. Okay, apart from perhaps the obvious response of lab closures in response to social distancing and, and regional rules, there are a number of other interesting topics surfaced by the salary survey. Let's talk a little bit about respondents, discussions of research uh, me methodology, uh, approaches, uh, and diversity. Lots of respondents commented on a change in workload during the pandemic. When considering the volume of research that was being conducted, half of responses in 2020-2021 mentioned that they uh, were doing considerably less research. That's half of responses that were mentioned workload, around 20, said they were doing considerably less research. This was as a result of pauses in the uh, for the immediate reaction to the pandemic. And thereafter, it's mentioned by respondents that new protocols uh, took time to implement, particularly 
technical protocols, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, but even if, after the new protocols were instilled, uh, several respondents mentioned that they were doing less research as a result of um, uh, remote working decreasing their productivity. And as studies became less efficient in a remote setting, if they were possible at all. So we'll discuss remote testing in the, in the next section. Uh, but interesting to note that in the late 2020, uh, a significant number of individuals who mentioned workload suggested they were doing less research as a result. A handful of respondents uh, expressly said they were conducting more studies, more studies in this late 2020 period than normal. This handful of people, uh, for a range of reasons, were perhaps picking up work from other international teams and were, in, uh, interestingly, finding faster than normal turnaround through the use of short remote studies as opposed to perhaps their normal, slightly longer form studies. So they were doing more work. There were also a handful of uh, mentions of efficiencies that were found using internal staff as playtesters which allowed for an increase in the number of studies that could be conducted. So whilst the majority of individuals that mentioned workload found they were doing less, there were some circumstances for a handful of individuals that found they were able to do more. For those people that mentioned workload, about a quarter of them said their workload was the same. Considering the following year, the late 2021 responses, there were far, far fewer mentions of workload or research volume or anything that suggested there was a change in the in the volume of work being done. It's far fewer, far less impact there. Those that continued to cite less work suggested that the cause was having uh, no, no availability of remote testing solutions for PC or console games, and also noted a general effect, uh, efficiency and effectiveness drop uh, as a result of doing remote testing. When considering research, we're of course not just talking about how much research that's being done, but also about the breadth and diversity of approaches. There were many mentions in the salary survey in both years of a reduction in the number of methods available as a result of the removal of in-person testing. And also uh, they sensed a reduction in the quality of research uh, that was being conducted. In fact, there were 31 mentions in total, spit approximately equally above both, both the surveys of this reduction in uh, or of fewer methods available and potentially weaker results being delivered. Those respondents lamented an increased reliance on surveys and a decrease in other methods and an increase in unmoderated remote sessions. There were descriptions of a struggle to capture the nuance in a remote setting that they were used to in an in-person uh, in an in-person setting uh, and an inability to use eye tracking or other software logging or other hardware tools to capture player behavior or uh, other information useful for the user research process as well as lamenting the research exercise itself there were discussions of the reduction in quality as a result of the results communication. And a, there were a few mentions made of the inability to host workshops or interact with other stakeholders as a substantial negative impact, having a substantial negative impact on the quality of work that was being done in this uh, pandemic reality. Now, not everything was worse, let's be clear. Although there were these 30 mentions of uh, reductions in quality, uh, reductions in the breadth of research being conducted, there were a dozen or so respondents that highlighted a desirable and positive uh, outcomes in terms of the breadth uh, and depth of research that they were able to conduct. Those included an increase in expert-led work, uh, an increase in the use of diary studies or longitudinal studies, an increase in the number of smaller scale behavioral studies, 
as well as an increase in the quality of those uh, pieces of research being conducted on account of the remote nature of them and the validity of those approaches ushered in again by being in a remote setting. And so across both years, uh, a real mixed bag. Uh, some individuals finding, uh, reporting that they were, as I say, fewer or weaker uh, research being conducted and uh, about half as many suggesting uh, the an increase in the breadth, diversity, validity and quality as a result of this remote setting. Let's dive deeper into this remote format, as clearly that's one of the uh, major changes that's happened to games user research in this period. And it was by far the most common topic across both years and all responses was the pivot to remote testing specifically. Around half of all the responses to this questions mentioned remote testing. In many cases, it was the only detail provided in their response to this question on operational changes ushered in by COVID. It was the specifically the, uh, the, the use of remote testing was new and novel uh, and ushered major change. Across both years of the salary survey were a host of frustrations, of outstanding challenges, of benefits and reflections upon the realities of remote testing that the pandemic has ushered in. So let's go through a few of those now. Among the benefits that the salary survey respondents uh, mentioned to remote testing, apart from the, of course, the inherent ability for them to just keep working, was a perceived increase in the diversity of, of the participant pool. It was also mentioned uh, a handful of times about it being easier to recruit participants operationally uh, as a result of the greater size of the participant pool. Because participants no longer required to be physically located nearby or to attend a playtest lab in person, uh, the, it was easier to find participants and increase the diversity of those participants. Participant recruitment wasn't universally praised. Uh, it was, uh, there were a small number of suggestions that player panels were being more rapidly exhausted by this pandemic reality. Uh, and a perceived increase, a, a few mentions of an increase in no-shows uh, for participants in this remote setting. And also, uh, I'll get to in a second, an increase in the technical issues associated uh, with participant recruitment because we're now much more reliant on participants' own technical setups as opposed to owning our own in a physical laboratory. Sticking with participant recruitment for a moment, there were 29 references across both those salary surveys to an, uh, a pivot to or an increase of utilizing internal staff as playtest participants. This was either uh, temporary in re response to that immediate closure or uh, permanent. There would seem to be, uh, you know, continued references in, even in the latter salary survey to the continued use of internal staff uh, as opposed to external participants. Those internal staff are, in some cases, uh, the only staff allowed on site for participation in playtesting in a laboratory. And in other cases, they are the only group that are trusted to see an unannounced game, which is to say that concerns about security are preventing the use of external participants. And so instead, teams are significantly more reliant or exclusively reliant on internal staff as their participants. Across the two salary surveys, uh, 20 references were made to the use of external, uh, sorry, internal staff in the first salary survey, 20, and 10 in the second, proposing that there is a continued use uh, of internal staff uh, as a participant pool, either, uh, either to supplement or exclusively. There are two other themes which appeared amongst discussions of remote testing, and both on similar topics, so I present, I'll present them both here. Those were the challenges of technology and of security. 
On technology, I already briefly mentioned the challenges reported on the complexities of remote testing for PC and for consoles and for VR. 10 respondents in total also highlighted the incompatibility between certain twitchier game genres and remote testing. So there are some game genres which lend themselves well and some which don't. Those which require fast reaction times are perhaps less suited to a streaming type solution for remote testing. They also mentioned those 10 responses, uh, respondents, the complexity of designing a functional testing solution, um, a functional technical solution for remote testing, uh, and an increase in the difficulties uh, of troubleshooting player side technical issues remotely. As I mentioned, we're now much more reliant on the participants' own technical setup in these remote uh, sessions, uh, which can be difficult to troubleshoot from afar. And lastly, they, there was a, a small number of mentions of uh, an undesirable increased reliance on technical support departments internal to these teams. And so we are more reliant on allies and uh, assistance from internal technical departments to get these playtests up and running than perhaps we're used to uh, in, in our own laboratories. And on the same theme, this idea of security. So a similar number of respondents, around 10, uh, 20 sorry, across both of the two surveys, mentioned security being a substantial barrier to their research. Those came in, uh, in a couple of different forms, either getting sign off from legal departments or in senior stakeholders to use uh, remote testing solutions, uh, and or challenges rooted in the increase of risk associated with remote user research, which is to say the leak, potential leak risk uh, associated with user research done remotely. This then looping back, of course, um, to the comments on using internal staff as research participants, as trusted uh, participants uh, associated with um, increased leak risk. Okay. We've covered some themes then and trends on the pandemic's impact on the games user research discipline as captured in our two salary surveys. We talked about the impact of lab closures and on the, the impact on breadth and depth of research and the benefits and drawbacks uh, associated with remote research. For games user research professionals, I hope this helps you feel seen and highlights that there's a whole community of folks working within the same constraints and trying to solve the same issues. Uh, they're benefiting uh, from res remote research the same as you. They're finding frustrations with this pandemic reality the same as you. And so I hope this might encourage a little more sharing about the solutions um, and even just the day-to-day -day realities of games user research. For career starters and whomever else is watching this in the future, I hope this is a useful uh, capturing of the response that games user research as a discipline has had to this pandemic just uh, surface some of the challenges we're facing it, it today in our day-to-day -day work and hopefully contextualizes uh, some of the lasting impact that the respondents uh, sense that this pandemic will have on the discipline of games user research uh, how it's conducted uh, who conducts it uh, the technical and the operational uh, impact, fingerprint, that I think, that this pandemic is likely to have on the future of our discipline. Thanks very much for tuning into this overview. Uh, please do continue to fill out the salary survey every year. I'm looking forward to providing more information uh, on the pandemic responses in future years if this, uh, if this talk is found to be of interest. Uh, and moreover, of course, if you're interested in the broader results from the salary survey, please continue to uh, watch the other parts of this conference where a, the bigger picture and the sort of the big numbers about the salary survey information will be uh, provided by my colleagues. Enjoy the rest of the Games User Research Conference. Thanks very much for listening and have a great day.